Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here coming at you with a first look. Well, you guys saw the black frame that I had that I was going to have sandblasted. Well, here it is. Just fresh back from the, uh, we call it the sandblasting shop. We ended up taking off the label that was up in the front here. And we put on later on. But the VIN number you can still see plain as day, which is nice. Um, to accompany the frame. So anyway, this is it right here. I mean, we got all the... All the paint, the old paint stripped right off of it. They did a, a, fan a fantastic job for the price. Um, I was gonna sandblast it myself, but I figured it'd be too costly. And you know, it was 55 um, bucks for the bag, for the, um, the sandblast. This cost me 50, so it didn't make sense to do it myself. Let them do it, you know. So I brought it to a place that specifically does sandblasting, and to do the whole frame was 50 bucks for that. They did a hell of a job. So this thing is going to look absolutely gorgeous when it's all done. So. Now at this time, while the bike is apart, um, if I want to clean up any welds, which are actually, they're all in really good shape. They're all going to come up nicely. But if you have a frame and you got some welds that are really crappy, now would be a time to address them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see this frame is nice and straight, nice and clean. And it's it's a, it's basically it's a fresh canvas, is what you're looking at. It's a fresh canvas to start on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, a thread chaser through each one. I have to pick that up tomorrow. The thread chaser. I'm going to do that after it's all painted though. And um, this bike is basically ready for uh, to be primed and painted. So this is for the KE102 build, the bike build. Um, this is one of my first steps on on doing the frame. I'm still working on the motor. But um, I'm kind of kind of trying to bring the uh, frame and the motor up at the same time. You know what I mean? And then I had um, someone always, I always ask, what are the good manuals to use? What are the differences between them? Um, some guys have the climber magazine, climber uh, manual, and some have the, um, the Hanes. Well, here's what I found, okay? The Haynes manual is basically this is that part, this is this part, this is that part. Where the climber is, this is this part, here's how it works, here's what you do, here's what to inspect, and here's how to here's what the specifications are gonna be. However, I have found information in this manual that is not in this manual, and vice versa. So I am going to recommend both manuals. Um, just for the sake of you'll get as much information as you possibly can out of the two. Now, um, this one right here covers rotary valves from 80cc to 350cc. This one right here just covers the KE100s, the KC100s, and the KH100s. But both of them have a lot of information. And I find this manual right here has the stuff for the early KEs, like for instance, this one does 66 to 01. This one only does from 75 to 99. So, there you have it. If you have an older KE100, say like a 72, it's in that one. If you have a Trail Boss 100, it's in that one. So, this the 99 specs can work all the way up to 2001. They're the same bike. I don't know why they didn't change that. Unless this print right here was up to 99. But that one right there covers everything. So this, this right here is an older print. I'm sure the newer ones go from 75 to 2001. However, that's an older book. And then what I like to do is whenever I'm working on something that is specific, like the pistons, the piston, what the piston diagnostic looks like, I like to keep that under the cover. When I do a clutch, these are all the clutch part numbers for all the clutch plates, see? The, um, what do you call it, the, the friction plate, the disc, friction plate disc, friction plate disc, friction plate. So I know I need four friction plates and three discs. The spring kit number and the gasket number. And I have that stapled to my schematic right here where I put the bolts into when I'm doing a clutch. And then I keep that also in the front cover. And just make sure you keep your books together because I do a lot of KEs, a lot of KDs, a lot of KMs. And that's all covered in that book where that one just covers the KHs, uh, the um, KEs. So, 
I wanted to share with you guys what I use for manuals. Um, you guys have asked that question. And brake specifications are also going to be in the climber manual where there's not really much information on brakes. Which I am going to be doing a video on brakes relatively soon. Might even be tomorrow. I might hit the, uh, I might do a video on brakes for you guys. Show you guys how to adjust and inspect brakes. Um, because there's a lot of um, misconceptions on brakes. And a lot of people don't know specifications. So, um, tomorrow night I'm going to do one on brakes. Tonight I'm just going to show you guys my first look at the KE100 sandblasted frame. This is awesome came out really really good I can't wait I cannot wait to do this bike cannot wait this thing is going to be absolutely gorgeous and she is going to be green the lime green so so I'm waiting for pots I got um let's take a walk down by the lamprey real quick and uh, we'll, we'll chit chat so I have um on that particular bike that I'm doing right there, the KE-102, I have, um, oh, what do you call it there? I have the, the choke lever on order. Um, that's coming in. That should be in within a week or so. And I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing the remote choke. You guys are going to love this. There's a little bit of um, work involved with it, but it's, it's totally worth it. And it's going to look beautiful. I mean, right on. So I'm going to have a remote choke. Instead of pulling up the choke... I'm just going to be able to go over to my handlebars and just whoop, choke. So, let's check out the lamprey, see how the lamprey's doing today. Um, I live in New Hampshire, as many of you guys know, and there is, I got the lamprey in my backyard. I keep forgetting to tell you guys something else, too. Um, this is the lamprey. They took out the, um, what do you call it, there, the dam a while back. The water used to be up to the, the ridge up here, but... See that tree line right there on the other side of the river? Yep. And back of that tree line is the old train track railroad bed. And they removed the train tracks all the way down. I could drive that all the way to um, Nashua, or, uh, not Nashua, or, um, Manchester, and um, it goes for miles. And they take the four wheelers and stuff and the snow machines on that during the winter. So it's pretty cool. And it's right across the, uh, the water. So. I got that all in my backyard. Lucky! So, who has two thumbs is, and is very lucky guy? This guy! So, um, tomorrow I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to talk to you guys about that. Um, tomorrow's Friday, and I am committed to doing the um, getting the master cylinder. I got to bore out the hole for the uh, master cylinder. Which I'm not going to do a video while I'm boring it out because that would be very boring uh, for you. But I'm going to be doing the brakes on the buggy tomorrow. But I'll do I'll do a quick short one on the you know mounting of the master cylinder and how that all is on the uh, the four x four here. Oh, not four x four, but the four x two. So I've already started boring it out a little bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about. The mount right here, or is it right here? The hole where that mounts on to has to fit inside there and so the hole is too small so we're going to grind that out and make it bigger we gotta get some dot four brake fluid and then we're going to bleed all the brakes on this thing so we can drive this thing the tires are shot um really really dry rod to heck so let me see if i have some tires on something i could possibly uh, rub off and get done this thing right here I don't know what the guy's planning on with this thing. I just took the cover off it a little while ago. Make sure there's no um, critters going in there. But, you know, we got, we got some stuff going on, guys. Got some stuff. I still got to do the rear end. It turns out I do have to buy a few pots for the uh, Ozark 250. But that's okay. That one's coming apart, or I might see... I have a, um, what do you call it, the, a gentleman I subscribe to on YouTube who I think is interested in that. Um, so we'll find out if he might be interested in it. You know, we got, we got some stuff going on, guys. We got some stuff. Winter's coming up, so we're going to be doing a lot of inside videos. But I don't mind working on stuff in the house. You know me. But yeah, this is the Joiner 250cc. Got a brand new clutch. Um, rebuilt the carburetor. Runs great. It needs a little bit of work. It needs um, mostly brake work. Brake wire and some lights and tires. Definitely needs tires.
but yeah, I figured I'd just do a quick video and show you guys my first look at the uh, what you gonna call it there, um, the KE100 bike build, and show you guys what I use for manuals. 